In this video we're going to take a look at some problems involving fractions that are a little bit more complex where we have multiple operations going on and we need to take into account the order of operations. So let's go ahead and take a look at this first one. Remember the order of operations in general we have the please excuse my dear Aunt Sally or some people say PEMDAS whatever works for you to help you remember. Okay, remember it includes P means stuff inside parentheses or grouping symbols. E is exponents. M and D are multiplication and division. Remember you do both of those from left to right and then addition and subtraction. We do all addition and subtraction from left to right. So this first one that we see we've got some exponents going on so we need to take care of those first one-fourth to the third power remember something to the third power means one-fourth times one-fourth times one-fourth three times so if I could write that out to maybe help us see what's going on there one-fourth times one-fourth times one-fourth four times four is sixteen times four is sixty-four so I have one sixty-fourth divided by and then one-eighth squared well one-eighth is squared is one-eighth times one-eighth so I can just clean this up a little bit take one-eighth times one-eighth eight times eight is sixty-four so I have one sixty-fourth divided by one sixty-fourth minus one-sixth Okay, now I've got division and subtraction going on. According to the order of operations, I need to do the division first. And remember, when we're dividing fractions, we do keep, change, flip. We keep the first fraction, so I'm going to go over here, keep the 1 64th. We change the division to multiplication, and then we flip the second one, take the reciprocal of the 1 64th. That would be 64 over 1 and then we got the minus one-sixth hanging along with us. Multiply that, we get 64. Remember, multiplying fractions, we just multiply straight across on the top and the bottom. So we have 1 times 64 is 64. 64 times 1 is 64. So we have 64 over 64, which is just 1. Minus one-sixth. Then we subtract that. 1 minus one-sixth. Well, I can think of 1 as 6 over 6, and I take one of those away, and I end up with 5 sixths. All right, let's take a look at another example here. The second one, we have parentheses, and there's some addition inside the parentheses. Remember, when we're adding or subtracting fractions, we need to have a common denominator. In this case, my common denominator is going to be 6, because I can turn this 3 into a 6 by multiplying by 2 on the top and the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this. 2 times 2 on the top is 4. 3 times 2 on the bottom is 6 plus 5 over 6. Okay, so now I have my common denominator. So then I go ahead and I can add straight across on the top. So 5, 4 plus 5 is 9 over 6. Remember, I just keep the denominator. Now, I just have multiplication. In multiplication, we just multiply straight across. And remember, I can also simplify first. I've got a 9 here and a 9 here. I can simplify that by dividing by 9 in both places. So then I get 1 and 1. Then multiply straight across. 1 times 1 is just 1. And 1 times 6 is 6. So I'm left with my answer of 1 sixth. All right, then. Let's head up over here and give this one a try. Okay, we've got division here and multiplication over here. So let's start with this division. One eight, oh, excuse me, <laughs> three eighths divided by two thirds. Remember, keep change flip again. I keep the three eighths, change the division to multiplication, and I flip the two thirds, so I have three over two. Oops. Give that another try. Make my two a little bit nicer here. All right. Then I'm just going to bring this other stuff along for now. 
and we'll dig into that part later. Okay, so now I've got this multiplication. Remember, multiplying fractions straight across top and bottom. So 3 times 3 is 9 over 8 times 2 is 16. Okay, so I have 9 sixteenths plus, and now let's dig into this part as well. When we multiply by whole numbers, we need to write that as a fraction as well. To write a whole number as a fraction, we simply put it over 1. Okay? Now, I can just either multiply straight across, or I can simplify. This time, for the fun of it, let's just multiply straight across. So 2 times 3 is going to be 6 on top, and 3 times 1 is just 3. Okay? So I have... 6 over 3, which simplifies to, bring the 9 sixteenths, 6 divided by 3 is 2. Okay, now we need to get a common denominator again. My common denominator in this case is going to be 16, so I need to write this over 16. To do that, remember 2 is 2 over 1, multiply by 16 on the top and bottom, and I find that I get 9 sixteenths plus 2 times 16 is 32 oops 2 times 16 is 32 not a line over 16 times 1 is 16 okay then I can add those 9 plus 32 is 41 over 16 okay now that's an improper fraction sometimes I can leave it like that but I want to write it as a mixed number to do that, I figure out how many 16's I can take out of 41. Well, I can take, let's see, I can take 2 would be 32. Can I take any more? No, I can't. So, I'm going to be left with 2, because I took out 2 16's. The 16 stays, and then I take out 2 16's out of 41. That's 32, and I'm left with 9. Okay? So, now, if we'd have gone back here, we would see, hey, wait a minute, that's familiar. If I'm adding that whole number to the fraction, remember I can just tie them together. So, in this case, my answer is 2 and 9 sixteenths. Alright, let's take a look at this last one. In this case, we have an exponent here, and then we've got some addition and subtraction. So, we need to do the exponent first. So, 1 half squared... Remember, squaring a number is just times itself. So 1 half times 1 half, that would be 1 fourth. So 1 fourth plus 1 fourth minus 2 thirds. Okay, now I've got to get a common denominator. Well, first, we just work our way across addition and subtraction. So the 1 fourth plus 1 fourth, we can do that part. 1 fourth plus 1 fourth would be 2 fourths. Then, because we add across the top, 1 plus 1 is 2, keep the denominator. So we have 2 fourths plus 2 thirds. Now I need to get a common denominator to finish that subtraction. In this case, the common denominator is going to be 12, because I can make the 4 and the 3 both into 12 by multiplying by something. So I'm going to multiply this one by 3 on the top and the bottom. I'm going to multiply this one by 4 on the top and the bottom because 4 times 3 gives me 12, 3 times 4 gives me 12. So 2 times 3 on this side gives me 6, and 2 times 4 on this side gives me 8. Okay, now I've got a common denominator of 12, so I can go ahead and subtract across the top. 6 minus 8 is negative 2 over 12, and simplify that, I can divide by 2 on the top and the bottom, divide by 2, Negative 2 divided by 2 is 1, negative 1, and 12 divided by 2 is 6. So there's our answer. Remember when we're working with fractions, the order of operations still applies if there's multiple operations going on. Other than that, take your individual skills, the different uh, things you need to do with fractions. Remember, if we divide fractions, we need to keep change flip. If we're adding or subtracting fractions, we need to have a common denominator. Then we just go through, work them out, one operation at a time, simplify at the end if necessary, and away we go. Hope this was helpful. Good luck.